Good evening, everyone. Let's get up on our feet as you're getting ready to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you guys ready? Yes. I'm not convinced. Are you guys ready? Yes. Let me just welcome all of you guys here in the sanctuary and those who are watching with us online. So let, let us get our hearts ready and I'd like to just call up the worship team to lead us into a moment of worship. Hallelujah. 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 Has, God, has God been good to you? Uh oh. Has God been good to you? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That does not sound so convincing. Has He been good to you? Yes. Look at your neighbor and tell him, okay. Look at your neighbor and tell him, God has been good to me. I cannot hear you. Look at him and tell him, God has been good to me. God has been good to me. So if he has been good to you, can you give him a shout of praise? Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know that we are a chosen generation? Hallelujah. How many of you do know that we are a chosen generation? Oh, oh, oh. 
walking in power. Can you declare that today? I walk in miracles. I live a life.
believe you don't talk to your neighbors. Ah, you don't talk to your neighbors. Is he your enemy? Is he your enemy? So try this. Hey! Oh, Timbale, Lutimba, Guloma, Luceba, and Abe. Timbale, Lutimba, Guloma, Luceba, and Abe. Go out of your way. Go out of your way. Even pastors are going out of their ways. So you can do even better than that. Come on, somebody. Hey! There is freedom in the house of God. There is joy in the house of God. Amen. There is joyful noise in the house of God. Hey! Come on, somebody. Oh, Timbale, Lutimba, Guloma, Luceba, and Abedu. Hey! 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 Oh, Timbale, Lutimba, Guloma, Luceba, and Abedu. Oh! I'm seeing some people. You're still standing. Somebody, can you lift up your voice and just start worshiping Jesus? God, we go give you all the praise, we give you all the honor because you deserve it. You alone deserve our praise, you alone deserve our praise and our worship. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We give you all the praise. Come on, somebody, can you lift up your voice to Jesus? Can you lift up your voice to Jesus? Jesus, you are the Lord of Lords. Jesus, you are the King of Kings. Father, we adore you today. We want to tell you how much we love you. We want to tell you how much we love you. Can somebody stop worshiping Jesus? Come on, somebody. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Why are you singing right now? There are a lot of people that are dying. People in the hospitals. But you are alive today. You can talk. You can breathe. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. deserve this Jesus but because of you we can now be called children of God we are privileged to be here right now Father we give you all the glory we give you all the praise we just want to bow down and worship you Jesus come on somebody worship Jesus worship Jesus we just want to bow down and worship you today because there is nobody like you Jesus 
worship Him. You can use your own song to worship Him. There is freedom in the house of God. You can sing your own song. You can sing your own song. You can worship with your heart. Just look around you. Look around you. If it was not by the, by the grace of God, I don't think you would have been here. Why do you deserve your grace, Jesus? I don't, I don't, I don't. Who am I, Lord, that you could give your life for me? Who am I that you could sacrifice yourself for me?
you to sing in tongues with this melody. Just worship in tongues, following the melody.
a shout of praise. Give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you give God a shout of praise one more time? Let me just start by saying a warm welcome to all of you in the century and those who are watching by the way of the internet. Just before you take your seats, find a person you have not seen this whole week and just give them a handshake, give them a hug and tell them that they're welcome. Welcome everyone to our third night of the All-African Conference 2019. Let me see those who are here for the very first time this week. If you are here for the very, very first time. Oh, I see a couple of hands. You're welcome and I promise you it's going to be an amazing time in the presence of God. Amen. And also, I'd like to welcome those who are watching by the way of the internet. If you're joining us for the very first time today, you're welcome. And just get your heart ready. God is going to change your life tonight. Amen. Amen. And we'd also like to ask all of you to please turn off your cellular phones or put it on silent mode so that it does not distract the person sitting next to you. We do not want to distract the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The presence of God is in this room and we want to honor his presence. Amen. And we we'll also like to let you know that you're not allowed to chew gum in the service. And also you're not allowed to bring any food or drinks with the exception of water. If you are chewing gum at the present moment, please make sure you dispose it. And don't stick it under the chair. <laughs> and also no private recording or picture taking. We already have the media team doing that for us. And we also have our kids ministry team, which is one floor down, and if you bring in your kids, please ask the ushers to please escort you to the floor uh, below us so that your kids can be there as well and receive, amen? And we also have a product table right at the door. I'm sure most of you guys saw it when you walked in. We have different materials, and which are books and CDs that they will bless you just after the service see those who are at the table and just inquire about the materials and make sure you buy one for yourself and be blessed as you do so. Amen. Uh, please, when you're coming in tomorrow, if you have not registered with us so far since Tuesday, please register at the book table. It's also our registration table. You also find our ushers right there. Register your names, your phone numbers, and your emails. Amen. And you're also welcome to worship with us at the River Church, Istanbul. And you can also find us on riveristanbul.com. You can also find us on Facebook. And we are also on Instagram as well as YouTube. We can access our live videos and other materials that are available there. And you can also follow the All African Conference page on Instagram, on Facebook as well for our upcoming events. Are you guys ready for what God is about to do tonight? I'm not convinced. Are you ready for what God is about to do in your life? Yeah. Let me just take this moment to please welcome Pastor Kola to come and lead us in our prayer session tonight. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A louder hallelujah. hallelujah. A resounding hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's rest to our feet, please. I want to appreciate all great men of God in the house, Dr. Safo and his beautiful wife. I appreciate you once again. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. Please, let's turn our Bible to the book of um, Luke, St. Luke, chapter 22, quickly. I want us to read together as we go into this prayer session. Luke 22, are we there? Luke 22. If you are there, say Yes. If you are not there, say, wait for me. <laughs> Fantastic. Are we there now? Luke 22, verse 31. 
And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Verse 32. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I want us to open our mouth and begin to pray. I want us to pray this evening against every spirit of backsliding in the lives of mem- I mean, church members both in Istanbul and all around the whole Europe. That I want us to open our mouth and come again the spirit of backsliding that is making people to get out of the church and start looking for help in places where there is no help. And the, 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 the challenge is this. When we don't pray, when they are messed up, they are still coming back to the church. So we are still the one that will still solve the problem. So instead of them coming back wounded, let us pray that they all come to. Open your mouth, open your mouth and begin to pray like that. I want to begin to speak in the spirit. Begin to talk to God. I cannot hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. Begin to intercede. Yes. Mali Rambroye Shikanta. Lord, we come against every spirit of backsliding. The power and the spirit uh, drawing people away from Jesus. Both the distance and the whole of Europe. We come against them now in the name of Jesus. We silence them. We paralyze their powers by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mali Rambroye Shikantelebo. Jesus, you are paid for this one, sir. Why would they go back? We come against every power that is leading them into captivity. We come against every power taking them out of the church. We come against the power and the spirit of discouragement. Let them go. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pull down the machinations. Let the gospel of Jesus Christ begin to move from places to places. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. It was, it was the master speaking here. It was, he said, Simon, Simon. It was like giving a word of knowledge. But Simon, I want to tell you, Satan has an agenda. And that agenda is to pull you away from me. You see, everyone that's the glory. This this particular conference was set up, you see, I mean, the title is mission. And life's destiny, ministry have been transformed through this this particular, I mean, conference. But I want us to pray. I want us to pray against the spirit that is snatching people away from the back of Jesus. I want us to pray, grace, even for concerning ourselves, that anything that is driving me away from Jesus, let my life go be your mother. I begin to pray like that. Begin, begin, to, begin to pray. Go into the spirit now. I begin to pray. Lord, we lift up this land of Turkey and the whole of Europe with your mighty hand. Let the spirit of backsliding, the spirit and the power, drawing people away from the gospel, snatching them from Jesus. Let that power be arrested now. Let that power be destroyed now. Let that power be silenced now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Oh yes. Yes. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. The master Jesus now told, he told, he told Peter, Simon, the agenda. He said that he may sift you as wheat. I want us to pray against the spirit of discouragement and suicide. <laughs> A lot of suicide is going all over the world now. You see, that is, the, that is why this conference is set up. We are, we, are, we are gathered here to make effect. Yes, that's why we are here. We are where we are here by the time doctor minister to us. I mean, people begin to minister. They are, they are here to empower us to go and effect our own locality. We are not just here together. I want us to pray against the spirit of discouragement and suicide. 
the spirit that is making people to lose focus. Oh, open your mouth and begin to pray. I want to hear your voices. Lift your right hand now and begin to speak in the spirit. Begin to come against all the plan of the enemy. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of discouragement. We come against the spirit of suicide in the life of believers in this land, in the all of Europe, in the mighty name of Jesus, your spirit of suicide, your spirit of discouragement, lose your hold, lose your hold, lose your hold. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Verse 22 says, He said, But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. That is, that is, Jesus was saying, Peter, you are going somewhere great, but your faith is going to come under attack. I want us to lift up our voices and begin to pray that the power that is uprooting faith from the heart of believers. In this place, in the whole of Istanbul, in the whole of Turkey, in the whole of Europe, that that power be silenced now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I want you to intercede. Open your mouth and intercede. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, arise and let every power attacking our faith or putting faith in the heart of people in the whole of Europe let the power be arrested now oh yes Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Maliram Braya Shikante, oh yes. Amen. 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 And he said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I want us to pray that before this conference is over, that the Holy Ghost will pour so much of the spirit of encouragement into us that we go and encourage others. We are, you see, this particular conference has an agenda. We are being gathered here to be fed and to go and effect we are not gathering so that we can go and gather us. So no, 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 no. We are here to be empowered, to be encouraged, so we can encourage others. So let us pray. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. I want us to lift up at once and say, Holy Ghost, fill my life with so much encouragement so that I can encourage others. And bring them back to Jesus. Begin to pray. 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 Spirit of the living God, I am here to receive from you, so that I can impart to others, so that I can encourage others, so I can bring the lost back to the kingdom. I refuse to leave the same way I came. In the mighty name of Jesus, Maleram Broya Shikanta. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Bible said, Baby, that prophet said unto Saul, He said, When you get to a mountain, you shall meet the company of prophets, and you shall be changed to another man. I want us to pray for ourselves and say, Holy Spirit. Change me to another person through this conference. He said, the children of, he said, God has not asked the children of Jacob to seek him in vain. We are not gathered yet to come. Look, the, I want us to gather next year and say, ha! Ah, after that conference, something great happened. That is why, are you ready now? Are you ready now? I want to begin to talk, begin, begin, begin to talk, begin, begin to talk to God like that. Go into the spirit, begin to speak. Begin to speak. Holy Ghost, change me to another man. 
Transform me inside out. Transform me inside out. Transform me inside out. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name we are praying. Now, every time, amen. Every time a genuine man of God is ministering, as we're going to be have as as, 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 as has been happening since Tuesday, there's something we call impartation. He flows for as many that can catch it. I want us to open our mouth and say, Lord, let me not miss your package for tonight. Oh, oh. <laughs> I look, listen to me. I am not, I'm here to collect my home. No, I don't know why you are here. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here because of you. I'm here because, ah, are you getting me now? I want to lead you to answer. I said, Lord, my own package during this conference, hand it over to me tonight. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, tonight is my night. Maleram broya shi kantaraba, rira reram broya shi kantarabo, rara re, rira reram broye, malira reram broye, shi kantaraba. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Oh, look at the heart of God in this place. I <laughs> listen to me. This is not an ordinary conference. Now I want to lift up your two hands and pray that that we are going to tell God that your servant are going to use tonight. Lord, refire him. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. He said, no man can receive anything except it be given from above. Oh, that is, oh God. Oh God, that is. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I want us to tell God. Listen, to, I want us to tell God that if somebody is going to use tonight, that he should repackage him with his fire to repackage our lives. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Oh, yeah, begin to begin, begin to begin to pray. Malembroya sikata. Rira rera mbroya sikantelebo. Malembroya sikanta. Rara re. Rara rera mbroya sikantelebo. Oh, yes. Lift up in Jesus' name we are praying. Lift your two hands now. Lift your two hands. Your two hands up. Everybody be quiet before God. Yes. Yes. Have your way, oh Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, have your way, Lord, have your way, oh Lord, have your way. Spirit of the living God, the executive power of the Holy Trinity. Unto your might shall we commit your servant you're going to use for us tonight. And even ourselves. Lord, you have not gathered, gathered us here in vain. But you have a purpose that this is your own vision. Not a man's ambition. Therefore, Lord, let there be an outpouring of your fire, of your power, of your grace, of your word, like never before. Let there be no one in this conference tonight that will live the same way he came or she came. Let us be richly blessed and let all the glory, all the honor, all the nation be unto you and the blessings to us, your children. This is our heart cry, oh God. Thank you, glorious Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Let's come for Jesus.
bless you, bless you. Come on, give the Lord praise in the house. Come on, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Put your hands together. Put your hands together for Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the King of glory. Come on now. Come on, a shout. A shout of victory. A shout of victory. A shout of joy. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> you, 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 you have to understand the raw faith of Africans. The raw faith of Africans. When it comes to prayer, that's all we know. That's what we know. That's what we break through with. That's what we push back the tide of the devil with. The raw faith in prayer. The raw faith. When Africans pray, the place shakes. The Bible, the Bible, oh yeah, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, when Africans pray, the place shakes. And, and this, is, this is something that people need to learn. People need to learn. People need to learn to pray. People, people need to, I said on Tuesday, when there is a man who prays, there is a God that answers. God is not interested in our sophistication. Some people are so sophisticated. God knows what we are saying. God hears us. I don't have to be dignified and sophisticated when I come to pray. I'm rough. I kick and I shout and I, and I spit. And it, don't, it doesn't move God. It doesn't, it doesn't bother God. He accepts me like that. Some people are so sophisticated. Praying and sipping coffee. Lord, as if they are in a board meeting. They're not in a board meeting with God. The Bible says the effectual, fervent, heartfelt prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In the Amplified Version, it says it makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. The Bible says when Peter and John were threatened by the religious leaders of their day, they were told, do not preach anymore in that name. You fill the whole place with the name of this man. Shut up. Don't ever speak that name. The Bible says they went back to their own company. When you need God to move, you need to find yourself some company that prays. Oh my God, I hope... I, I, hope, I hope there's somebody in the house tonight that understands that when we pray, things move. When we pray, things move. When we pray, things change. When we pray, we commend, we declare, we decree. And when we declare and when we decree, the obstacles must move. Obstacles move when we pray. In Mark 11, verse 22, the Bible says, Have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be moved, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, when ye pray, believe that ye receive it, and ye shall have it. When ye pray, when, not after you have prayed, but when ye pray, when ye pray, believe. Come on now, say amen. amen. Believe. Do, do we have some believers in the house tonight? Do, do you believe? Do you believe you receive? Do you believe that your life will never ever be the same again after this conference? The effectual, fervent, fervent, fervency in prayer this demands that your heart is involved. Fervency in prayer demands that your heart is completely, totally involved. 
I see a lot of distractions when people pray. People are busy with so many things. They're busy talking there. They're busy doing this. They're busy doing that. They are not fervent in prayer. They are not focused. That's the reason why they don't have a breakthrough. Because first and foremost, there is no honor to God. I've always said this many times. I've said this. If the president of your country, walked, of your nation, walked into the house, how would you react? How would you carry yourself? How would you behave? I'm not sure you'd be sipping tea and talking to him. Preaching good now. I'm not sure you'd be sipping tea and talking to your president. I'm not, I'm not sure you'd be sticking your finger in your nose and you wouldn't do that when you, you're standing before your president. The moment they tell you the president is coming, you will stand on your feet in, in utmost respect. Is that correct? In utmost respect. In actual fact, when they tell you you're going to meet your president next month, you go to the best boutique in town, you buy yourself the nicest clothes, you buy yourself, my God, the best suit, you want to look good before your president. Meeting a president is not a casual thing. But meeting the president of presidents. Meet, meeting with the king of kings and the lord of lords. Meeting with the maker of heaven and earth. Meeting with the one who sits in heaven. And the Bible says the earth is his footstool. Meeting with the one who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. The gold is mine. The silver is mine. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The people and they that dwelleth in it. That's whom you've come to see. We've got to approach God with utmost regard. Utmost respect. Come on now say amen. amen. I love it when Africans pray. Praise God. I just love it. I hear people in this day and time, they speak against the church. And I can tell you one of the reasons why there is still sanity in Africa is because of Africans that pray. It's, it's, it, it would have been total chaos in, 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 in all of that continent. But we have a praying people. Come on now, say amen. amen. We have a praying church. We have people who know how to move God. We have people who know how to demand that God's agenda be done. Come on now, say amen. amen. You have to understand that God has a, an agenda. God has an agenda for this nation. And one of the reasons why I believe we are taking the time to pray in this conference is for you to catch the heart of God. You can't, you can't be in a nation that you hate and expect to prosper. Praying for a nation will give you the heart of God for the nation. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now, say amen. amen. Praying for a nation will put the heart of God in you for that nation. I've heard people say, I don't like this country. I hate this country. You can't hate it. And you shouldn't have that, 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 that word in your vocabulary in the first place. You hate no man. You hate no man. Come on now, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Whew, glory to God. We've had, the last two days has been amazing. Off the hook. Off the chains. We've, we've had the move of God. We've had... The pure word of God preached and taught in this place. Come on now, say amen. amen. And I, I, am, I am so glad to be a part of what God is doing. Amen. I'm so glad. Anybody glad to be a part of what God's doing? Praise God. <laughs> yes. To God alone, to God alone be all the glory. Before you, before you take your seat, 
most of you are standing, some of you are, it's okay if you're sitting. But before you take your seat, I want you to go out of your way. I want you to be a prophet to three people. You know, being a prophet does not mean being in a fivefold ministry. We are, we are a prophetic generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a set-aside people called forth to display the glory of the one who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The spirit of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy. So I want you to tell three people, God's about to rock your world tonight. Tell that to three people. God is about to rock your world. God is about to radically, radically bless you. God's about to completely change your life. God bless you. Go ahead and make yourselves comfortable. I like the way someone said it. Someone said, go ahead and sit uh, in high places. I like that. We're sitting, we're sitting in high places. Come on now, say amen. amen. Come on now, say praise the Lord. Praise Somebody say the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. We want to welcome everyone that's come in the house. We want to say one welcome to you. This is AAC All African Conference 2019. Uh, we are so glad that you've joined us. And we also want to welcome everyone that's watching by way of the World Wide Web. We're streaming on www.riveristanbul.com. You can also find us on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. You can actually follow All African Conference on Facebook and on, on Instagram. You'll find us on social platforms. And uh, connect with us. The Lord has a lot that he does with this conference. And in the subsequent weeks, months, and a couple of years to come, you can actually follow our updates on the things that shall be unfolding. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I also want to say a big God bless you to all the servants of the Lord and the house. God bless you all for coming. Uh, thank you for being a part of what God's doing. The presence of a man of God, the presence of a woman of God, a servant of God is a big encouragement to me, to my wife, and of course to everyone in the house. Uh, it shows that, just like what uh, Bishop Safa was saying yesterday, the need to work in unity. We can't be shooting ourselves and we can't be climbing the shoulders of other people and putting them down. The world has already created a pyramid scheme and we must not operate like the world does. Amen. Amen. We have to come together. Jesus said, by these shall all men know, ye are my disciples, if ye have love one for another. I want to say love. love. Love must be our watchword. Love must be what drives us. It must be what propels us. Come on now, say amen. amen. I can't be fighting and bickering and complaining and uh, wondering why I'm not making headway in life and ministry and business. Where there is strife, there is all forms of wickedness. And so you can afford to have strife in your life. You can afford to have strife with anybody. Come on now, say amen. amen. One, one, of the, one of the major things I learned from the late Kenneth Hagin is he said, I choose to walk in love. Amen. So people wronged me, but I choose to walk in love. Amen. 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 Because according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love will always win. Come on now, say amen. amen. So I really like the fact that we have servants of God in the house. Thank you so much for coming. Church, can you please... Help me put your hands together. Let's welcome all the men of God in the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I just go ahead and Pastor Steve, God bless you. The pastor of uh, the Redeemed Church in Abdullah Branch, God bless you for coming. Thank you so much. Yes, known this man for a very long time. God bless you, Pastor Kolawole Olalikbeku, a very good friend. Pastor of Mountain of Fire. And Miracle Ministry here in Istanbul. God bless you. Of course, they don't need any introduction, but I'll go ahead and still introduce them. Bishop El Safo and Lady Pastor Nikki. Uh, God bless you for coming. Amen. Devotion, Devotion Church. Amen. It was initially, it was ablaze. And 
the Lord led you guys into changing to devotion church. Amen. They're very devoted people. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I also want to acknowledge my dear friend uh, uh, Samuel Ibo. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for coming. Like I, like I said, the man should be in Nigeria right now, but he said, no, I'm not going to go to Nigeria. I'll wait. I'll move my ticket and I'll leave. Are you leaving tomorrow or are you leaving? He's leaving on Saturday. He said, I'm going to wait. I spoke to my wife already. I'm going to wait till the conference is over. God bless you. God bless you. Of course, Pastor Amos Adeinka, God bless you. Winners, Winners Chapel International, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Pastor Emmanuel Matovo, God bless you, God bless you for coming. Thank you so much, thank you so much for coming. We love you, God bless you. New life, new life church, praise God. Who else? You hang around pastors, you've, you don't, the anointing comes upon you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Introduce my ammo bearer. God, <laughs> I'm introducing pastors now. Pastor Priscilla. Oh my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The prayer meeting yesterday was a bomb. Amen. It was a blast. This woman can pray. Amen. When you want to marry, marry a woman who knows how to pray. That. Some of you are managing the clap. <laughs> Mar Mar <laughs> marry, marry a woman who can pray for you for two hours nonstop. Three hours nonstop in tongues. Three hours. I come out from the bedroom, I go to the living room. My, my God. This woman won't stop. I go back to the bedroom. <laughs> no, listen. It's important. Some people don't even know who to marry. They don't know who to marry. They're marrying the wrong people. Amen. Find your wife in the house of God. Find your husband in the house of God. Not in the nightclub. I'm just going to let that sink in. <laughs> Think about that. You know the Bible, when you read the book of Psalms, it says uh, Selah. The word Selah in the Bible, it's pause and think on that. You marry the wrong person, it will be your worst nightmare. You'll be having Selah. <laughs> you marry the wrong person, you're going to be having nightmares every day. Headache. Trouble. Fight. I find my wife in church. Where did you find yours? Uh, praise God. Amen. <laughs> no, you know, sometimes people think, I'm going to say, open your Bible to Matthew 24. No, listen, I'm preaching already. You just don't realize that I'm ministering already. I'm ministering already. I come up, this is the way I minister most of the times. I don't necessarily go into the Word when I start, but we will go to the Word. But I'm just, I'm just going to say what the Lord puts on my heart. Tonight is going to be awesome. Tonight is going to be amazing. And somebody's going to get something and leave this place with something that will totally revolutionize their lives. You, you, you can't come to a place like this under the word, the pure word, and under the anointing and live the same way. Absolutely impossible. Something is about to happen to somebody 
Your life is about to turn around to the glory of God 180 degrees. And I said it on Tuesday when I started. Most of the time, it's prophetic. We're preaching and we're declaring what God is about to do. We're preaching and we're prophesying. A lot of times people think prophecy is old. Balehi tele, da da he, no. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. A lot of times the messages we preach is prophetic. 60 to 70 or 80 percent of what we preach is prophetic. When we begin to declare what the Lord's going to do, it's prophetic. Come on now, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I also want to say, God bless you, Pastor Ergu. God bless you. <laughs> Put your hands for our pastor, one of the pastors here in the river. She's such a blessing. Amen. So much work she did to make this happen. You need to, first, first, you clap, first you clap for her as a pastor, now clap for her for the work. <laughs> I want to also acknowledge our Baba. Pastor Hamdi. You cannot not clap for Pastor Hamdi. I say you cannot not clap for Pastor Hamdi. Come on, guys. We honor the man. We honor this man of God. Yes. Yes. God bless you. Thank you so much for being so honoring to Pastor Hamdi. And of course, Pastor Leila was here on Tuesday. Yesterday she was very busy. I believe she's busy today. She's actually preparing for some TV programs. That's the reason why she's not being able to come yesterday and today, I believe. But I also want to say, Pastor Hamdi, Pastor Leila, they have been parents to me and my wife personally. And of course, I know to the entire River Church and not just the River Church, but there are so many people connected to our ministry, our church, that they have been parents too. You hang out with them. They're encouraging from the beginning to the end. And they, do, they, they, also, they also rebuke. They rebuke us. But <laughs> and Pastor Hamdi is the best if there's anything like a, re, like a rebuker. Pastor Hamdi is the best rebuker. When Pastor Hamdi is done rebuking you, you just think, did he rebuke me? Did he just rebuke me? Because it mixes a lot of love with it. Amen. We love Pastor Hamdi. We love Pastor Leila. But I also want to say Pastor Corey and Pastor Rose are apostles. We, <laughs> come on, give a shout out to Pastor Curry and Pastor Rose. They, <laughs> we love you, Pastor Curry and Rose. We love you, apostles. That the Lord sent to this nation Amen. that brought the Pentecostal move. Hallelujah. They came here when there was hardly anybody that knew anything about the Holy Ghost. And they brought the move of God. It was in their meeting I was touched in 2000. And since that day, my life has never been the same again. Hallelujah. And I've been with them now going to 20 years. Going to, 20, go, <laughs> go, going to 20 years, that itself, that itself is a testimony. <laughs> and every, literally, literally everywhere I travel to, everywhere I have the opportunity to preach, I introduce myself, I introduce my family, and the next person I introduce is my pastor. And I tell people I've been with him for Number of years, 19, 20. We're going to 20, actually. I met him in 99. And uh, December the 5th, we shall celebrate the 20th anniversary of the River Church. 
in Istanbul. Amen. An apostle who God has used to raise many up in the ministry. And the ministry has affected many directly and indirectly. I look at Africans and I look at the churches in, in Istanbul and in Turkey, and you can see Pastor Corey in literally all the churches. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That's true. You see Pastor, a little bit of Pastor Corey here, a little bit of Pastor Corey there, a little bit of Pastor Corey. Somebody somewhere has had come through and had been impacted by his ministry in one way or another. And so we give God the glory for his life and ministry. Amen. Amen. And we want to honor him. I want to say we love Pastor Corey and Pastor Rose. And they are such a great blessing. Amen. Amen. No, you need to do all these things, okay? These things, you know, you, know, you have to do this stuff, right? Is it okay? Yes. Awesome. Now, we're going to give each one the opportunity to sow a seed tonight. I'm going to receive the offering, and then I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. And, Rosny, you have a song? Do you have a song you want to do tonight? Yes, you will. Um, <laughs> you're going to do a song, Rosny, uh, after the... In actual fact, here, let's do it this way. We're going to have you guys do a praise song, rejoicing, and people will come up here and dance and give and worship the Lord with your giving. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Father, we thank you for your word is life. Your word is spirit. The Bible says you sent forth your word and healed them and delivered them out of all their destruction. I ask, O oh God, that you will speak to each one. Even as I bring this word of exhortation before everyone is given the opportunity to sow a seed and to, to give to you tonight. The Lord, every heart is receptive and every mind is alert. And your will be done in this place. In Jesus' marvelous name and everyone shout amen. amen. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. It says, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. Though your beginning was small, your latter end will increase. God is a God of increase. Where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow. God is a God of increase. God wants to increase you. God wants you to increase. God does not want you to diminish. God wants you to increase. Though your beginning was small, you will increase exceedingly. I see churches increasing. I see your business increasing. I see new doors opening up to you. I see you taking new territories. I see you plowing new grounds. I see you stepping into places people did not think you could. I see you rising. I see you rising higher. Even though it seems like people have tried to push you down and keep you down. But I can tell you tonight that when God is with you and God is lifting you up, nobody can put you down. The Bible says promotion does not come from the east or the west. God is judge. He boots one down and he exalts the other. Can I tell you that it is your time for exaltation? It is your time for an acceleration. It is a time for a speeding up of things. It's not going to be business as usual. My God, I'm beginning to prophesy again. It's not going to be business as usual. What you couldn't do, you find out that after this conference is over, the grace of God would have come upon you and you'll be able to do the things that you could not do. Come on, if I'm speaking to you, let your amen be the loudest in the house this evening. <laughs> Don't despise the days of small beginnings. The reason you must not despise the days of little beginnings is because big days are coming. If there are big small days, then there are big days. As the big days are upon you. Amen. Don't despise where you are today. God is about to do big things in and through your life. Amen. I'm going to give you 
two quick stories. And then I believe the stories that I'm going to give you will speak a lot and speak volumes regarding the verse of scripture that I just gave you. Though your beginning was small, your latter end will increase greatly. I went out to visit this was a number of years ago. I was out in Istanbul in uh, Osman Bey area, particularly just visiting and just doing my pastoral work of visiting with people and evangelizing and trying to catch some new fish. I don't mean, know if you know what I mean by that. Good. Jesus, I'll make you fishers of men. So I went to this restaurant in Osman Bey that was owned by an African lady. And when I walked into the restaurant, because I understood that people would converge in places like that, Africans. So I went into this restaurant and I bumped into this young man. And when I began to talk to him, I discovered that he was the food delivery boy. That was a food, food. delivery boy. Delivery. He was the guy who took food from office to office. So he was working for this lady, I guess at that time, I guess he was being paid 20 lira daily. I'm not sure, but he was a food delivery boy. So I struck up a conversation with him and one thing led to another, to cut a long story short, he began to come to church. He came to our church and I kept following up on him. I guess it was weekly or every other week I met with him and we spent some quality time together. And what I was doing was discipling. What I was doing was pouring into him what the Lord had given to me. He was still a food delivery boy, by the way. And he came to the River Bible Institute and was trained. But little did I know that the Lord was doing an amazing work in his life. When he was through with two years of Bible school... He came to Pastor Corey and he said to Pastor Corey, I want to go back to Nigeria. So Pastor Corey blessed him and released him. I want to release him. That is something that needs to be understood by church people. You don't ever leave a church. You are released. And all the pastors should say Amen. You don't ever leave a church. You should be released. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. You don't leave. You should be released. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm speaking in the context of a healthy church. Okay? You know what I mean by that. You don't leave. You should be released. Because when you are released, the blessing goes with you. When you are released, the blessing works for you. When you are released, the same anointing on the ministry that releases you will come upon you and work for you wherever God sends you to. Come on now, say amen. amen. So he goes back to Nigeria. And about two years ago, he messaged me. It was Sunday. Uh, one morning, I got a message, and in my message, it reads, Pastor Godwell, I was praying this morning, and I was reminded of the seed that I sowed that broke the back of poverty. He said, I remember it was during Eurasian camp meeting. I sold this big seed and it broke the back of poverty. I want to thank you for teaching me prosperity. He said, today I buy cars like you buy pure water. I went to Abuja three years ago. He left his business, flew down to, came down to Abuja and stayed with me the whole time. We ministered in churches in Abuja. We went to Ibadan, to the river church in Ibadan. He was with me. This young man wouldn't let me pay. You try to buy a thing, no, he wouldn't let you pay. But how did I meet him? I met him as a food delivery boy. I met him as a boy who was working in a restaurant, running from place to place and delivering food. You know what he told me? 
because we just came back from Nigeria. My wife just arrived a couple of days ago. I came back about two, day, two weeks ago. But when I told him, I said, look, I'm coming to Nigeria with my family. He said, I'm going to leave everything I'm doing. I'll leave my business, and I'll be your driver while you are here in Lagos. Sent me a picture of two cars, so three cars. He said, which ones do you want me to come to the airport with? And when he saw his schedule was going to be so busy, he said, okay, I'll be busy, but I'll give you a driver. Give me a driver. I said, don't bother about paying nothing. The driver will drive you the whole time. The whole time I was in Lagos, I had a driver and I had a car driving me everywhere, driving my family. When I came back, the driver kept taking care of my wife and my daughter. And this young man said to me, Pastor God, well, I never heard this. I, I didn't know this. He said, when I was coming back to Nigeria, the boss I was working with gave me $15,000 worth of goods and $15,000 cash. <laughs> I did not have to pay nothing. He just said, take this and go back. He said, I remember the seed I sowed, and I want to thank you for teaching me prosperity. Amen. He said, now I'm so blessed. He said to me, my mother, my own mother looked at me because of the way God's blessing me, he said, my mother looked at me and my mother said to me, if not because you're my son, I would have said you've done money ritual. <laughs> you've killed someone to make money. Because the way God is radically blessing him shocks his mom. People in the church are so upset with the way God's blessing him and they're gossiping about him. They said, this man must be doing something wrong. You know, because you have a lot of unbelievers in the church today who do not believe that God can radically bless a man and raise a man up and make a man great. God says, I will bless you and I'll make you a blessing. God wants to lift you up and put you on the pedestal. People will look at you and they'll be shocked at the way God will bless you. They'll be amazed at the things that God will do in your life. And people will think it's the devil. But listen to me. We serve a big God. Our God can bless. Our God can increase. Our God can change your story. Our God can bless your socks off. Come on now, say amen. Amen. So he took absolute care of us. I said, I'll be going to Temagana. He said, I'm coming with you. Flew down to Ghana with us. Hallelujah. Stayed with us all the while we were in Ghana. Flew back to Lagos with us. Just a complete total blessing. Bishop, you met him, right? Pardon? 20, oh, you heard the testimony. Oh, you were there when he told the story. It was 20000 20000 $20, the boss gave him. Praise God. God commands a blessing and nobody will stop you. God, you know this thing we call favor? It works. Some people are thinking, my God, Pastor God, will, I, hope, I hope this can happen to me. Listen, listen, if you can believe, all things are possible. Come on, I say amen. amen. Come on, I say amen. amen. The, one of the biggest attacks on the body of Christ today is to get the church to back out of the supernatural. There is supernatural provision. We are not going to back out of the supernatural because our God is a supernatural God. Our God does supernatural things. The book of Acts is a book that's filled with supernatural occurrences. Our God is a supernatural God. And every believer here can live supernaturally even when it comes to the area of provision. Come on, I say amen. amen. He said, now I buy cars like, uh, I, I buy this car. Buy. He said, now my family is saying, stop, you're buying too many cars. Stop buying cars. I tell his story like everywhere I go. And he's still very humble. Some of you, no, not some of you, some people. Because <laughs> I'm about to say something, I'm not going to refer to you. But some people, they, they get blessed and they think they are now... Bigger than the one who raised them up. They get blessed and they think they are now bigger than their pastor. He said, I want to thank you for teaching me prosperity. 
We're at the airport in, in Lagos, about to board the plane, and he said to me, Pastor, when we come back from Ghana, I'm buying a house. This was a food delivery boy. God can raise you up, bro. God, listen, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God can raise you up. Praise God. I pray that faith will rise in people's hearts tonight. We must understand why we give. We must understand that when our hearts are sold out to the kingdom of God and for the things of God, God will not hold back from us. The blessing of the Lord will make you rich. And he'll add no sorrow to it. Come on, say amen. amen. Anybody ready to go to the next level? Amen. Anybody ready to see God supernaturally change their story? Anybody ready to begin to, to give into the kingdom of God like they've never given before? Anybody understands that when you are a pipe, when you are a, con when you are a conduit, when you are a host, that God can flow through you. Because when God can bring it to you, God can bring it to you and through you, then God will bring it. The problem is because God tries to bring it through many, but they stop it. They become the hindrance to what God wants to do. God is looking to bless people in the world. God is looking to bless your fellow African brother, African sister. But you have to make up your mind that you are going to be a blessing. You're not just going to be blessed, but you're going to be a blessing. Yeah. Tell three people, I am a blessing. I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. I'm not stingy, tight-fisted. I don't look through a keyhole with both eyes. I'm not narrow-minded. I'm not stingy. It's not me, myself, and I. Come on now, say amen. amen. That's story number one. Story number two. A number of years ago, a young man walked into the office, and he brought me a seed. And the seed was five euros. And when he came into the office, he was apologetically giving me five euros. He said, Pastor, I know this is nothing. I'm so sorry. I wish I can give you more. I said, stop it. Stop it. Don't apologetically give. Don't apologize for giving. That's what you have. And more than the size is your heart. And God sees your heart. I said, now change your attitude. Because I'm not going to receive your seed in unbelief. Give it in faith. Quickly, that moment he changed his attitude. Yes. Because see, God loves a cheerful giver. Not a sorrowful, cheerful giver. But a, a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. He brings that five euro with faith in his heart because I challenged him to change his attitude. And he brought that five euros with faith in his heart and put it in my hands and I received it. I prayed. About three, four, five, five months ago. Was it five months ago? He said, Pastor God, I want you to come to Paris. And I'll take care of everything. And got the plane ticket and got me to stay with him and his family, paid for everything from A to Z. Blessed. Now married with two kids. In actual fact, when I came back, they had the third child. He was supposed to be at this conference, but he said, he wrote to me and said, I'm sorry, I'm actually going through a business training now. He's about to start his own business. He's been working, but Lord has been blessing and increasing him on every side. One moment, you're giving just five euros. The next moment, you're sponsoring a whole trip. Amen. You know, I, I just, I've, come, I've come to the point where I know this thing works. And I've said over and over again, a man with an experience is not at the mercy of a man with an argument.
Pastor Godwell, this old seed thing, seed time and harvest, it doesn't work. I've done it many times. That's why it's not working for you because you don't do it in faith. Your attitude is stinking. It doesn't work. It's not right. It works. I say it works. Because I've seen people, I've seen people with t- testimonies. I'm talking about living proofs. I'm not talking about story that I pulled out from nowhere. I'm not talking about something I read in a book. I'm talking about people that I know personally. Come on now, say amen. amen. It works. Amen. Your beginning may be small, but your latter end will increase greatly. Increase is coming to somebody. Your latter end will increase greatly. That business may be small today, but get ready for a conglomerate. That, that business may just be serving a couple of people today, but get ready to serve a whole city. Get ready to serve a whole nation. Get ready to serve a whole continent. God is going to increase your influence God is going to take you all over the world. God is going to bless you to the point where you become an influencer across the globe. God is going to so raise you up and you will pinch yourself because you will think you've died and gone to heaven. God is about to radically touch your life and bless your life. And God is about to bring you opportunities and new doors. God says in the book of Isaiah chapter 45, I I will hold your hand and I will go before you. I'll make the crooked places straight. I'll break in pieces the gates of bronze. I'll cut in sunder the bars of iron. I'll loose the loins of kings to open unto you the two leaf gates. And the gates will not be shut. Come on now. I'll give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. I'm telling you that God is going to raise you up. We're going to have African millionaires running all over this nation, running all over Europe, running all over the world, running and being a blessing. God wants to radically bless you. Empower you that you might empower other people. Come on now, say amen. Tonight as you give, give in faith. Don't give in doubt and unbelief. Don't ask the question, is this possible? Because it is possible. Your beginning may be small. And many of you have been, you've been in this small thing for a long time. It's been small somewhere in the corner. It's been small somewhere in your house. It's just been small all these years. But there's going to come an anointing that will bring increase upon everything that you lay your hands upon to do. You you will, you, can I prophesy? You, You will be like a tree planted. By the river of waters, bringing forth your fruit in each season, your leaves will not fade. Whatever you touch will prosper and come to maturity. Come on now, say amen. Amen. Send now prosperity upon your people, I pray. Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus that these hands will not beg. I declare in the name of Jesus that these hands will continually give. I declare in the name of Jesus that they will never know a day of lack. They will never know a day of poverty. I declare that ministries will grow. Ministries will increase. Money shall come from the east, the west, the south, and the north. Even those who do not want to give. Father, we thank you that when you command a blessing, favor will come. And Lord, people shall go out of their way to bless your church. They shall go out of their way to help and empower your people. People will bend over backwards to be a blessing, to be a blessing, to be a blessing. The ravens are coming. The camels are coming. The trucks are coming. They are coming loaded, coming to your house, coming to your church, coming to your business. Come on now, if you believe it, receive it tonight. Give the Lord a big hand of hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. The camels are coming. The, the, the ravens are coming. Truck loads are coming. Praise God. You'll be blessing the city, blessing the fields, blessing the country. Come on now, say amen. amen. The nations of the earth shall look at you and call you blessed. You will be a land of delight. You will not be a land of fright. My God, when you say I am blessed, people will look at you and say, yes, you are blessed indeed. Because our God is good and His mercies endure it forever. 
The Lord is about to turn someone's story around. The Lord is about to impact you. The Lord is about... Ah, I'm prophesying. I wish you knew it. The Lord is about to turn everything around 180 degrees. Come on now, say amen. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the work of your hands. Your basket is blessed. Come on now. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. And running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Come on now. Say amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Is anybody receiving what I'm declaring over you tonight? Bless everywhere you go. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. The Lord will give you wherever the soles of your feet shall tread upon. The Lord will give you the gates of your enemies. Your enemies will not be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Come on now, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Worship team, please come. Let's do a song and let people rejoice as they give to the Lord tonight. Father, we thank you that you speak to each one about what you have them do. Lord, I thank you that as people will sow their seed tonight. Listen, if the Lord speaks to you to do something radical, something you've never done, do not doubt, do not argue, do not second guess yourself, do not rationalize. Go ahead and do whatever the Lord tells you to do. That is what Mary told the young man. He said, she said to them, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it, do it. Father, I pray, speak to each one. Tell them what you want them to do tonight, even in this offering. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that they give in faith. They give in faith. They release in faith. Like the stories I've told, men that give in faith. And Lord, they've seen your hand and they still see your hand. And they still see your power move. We honor you. We glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name. Put a basket up here. Put a basket up here, ushers. Put the basket here, please. The baskets. The offering baskets. Put them here. Praise God. Are you ready, guys? Let's all stand. Just like we did yesterday. Coming from the back. Giving everyone the opportunity to rejoice and give to God today. We have just started. The service hasn't even done, gone far. We're just halfway. Hallelujah. Stay with us. Don't be in a hurry to leave. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like ay 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 ay. Oh
Thank you that you bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go ahead and take your seat. What I want to speak to you tonight will basically be about mobilizing people into what God wants them to do. Because the theme for this conference is the mission. I want to say the mission. I would like for you to please go with me to the book of Matthew and chapter 25. Now, as we approach God's word, I would like for people to give God and his word the utmost respect. So please, go ahead and take a seat. I would like for somebody to please... Open to the book of Matthew and chapter 25, and we're going to read from verse 15. Can I give the microphone to Pam? Can you read, please, for me? Matthew chapter 25, and we're going to read from verse 15. If you have found it, say amen. Amen. Go ahead, please. Uh, Matthew 25, verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Keep going. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strode. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is mine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strode. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, Hmm. and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Go ahead. Finish it. And cast ye the unprofitable seven into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall he gather all nations, shall be gathered Amen. all nations. Thank you. And he shall separate them from you can one finish. from another. You can finish, finish there. Amen. There are several observations that I want to share with you tonight. And I want to try as much as I can to bring a teaching here that will help us understand what this conference is about. The theme for this conference is the mission. And on Tuesday, I began to talk to you on some things that I believe you need to understand with regards to the mission that God has given to the All-African Conference. I defined what mission is. And I began to tell you that this platform is not a platform where people just come to get blessed. Yes, people get blessed when they come here. Like I told stories of people whose lives were radically impacted as they came to the All-African Conference. 
But it's not just a place where you come to get blessed. It's a place where you come to get empowered. People must be empowered. Because until you are empowered, you cannot accomplish God's purpose for your life. As we see in this account that we read here, there is no individual that does not have a mission. Everyone has a divine mission, whether you know it or not. Everyone has a divine mission. Three servants here, I believe, are representatives of everyone that's here tonight. The first man was given five talents. There are many like that tonight in this place. The second man was given two talents. There are many like that tonight in this place. And the third man was given one talent. What I needed to see is the fact that God gave to each of them something. Nobody in this house tonight, or those watching by way of the internet, is giftless. Everyone has a gift. Everyone has a mission. And that is the first observation that I want you to see in this verse. Everyone has a mission. Can I tell you tonight, there is a mission on your life. There is a divine mission. Look, Jeremiah did not know that God had formed him in his mother's womb. Did not know that God had called him to be a prophet to the nations. And God showed up and said to him, young man, while you were in your mother's womb, I formed you. And I called you and ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. You will uproot, you will tear down, and you shall build. Jeremiah understood that God had a divine mission for his life, but God had to come and reveal it to the young man. And God said to him, don't be afraid of your faces. Whatever I tell you, that is what you must speak. There is a divine mission on your life. God is not partial. God is a giver of good gifts. Everyone has something. Come on now, say amen. amen. Everyone has something. Everyone has something. That is number one observation. Praise God. You look at some people, they seem to be more spiritually gifted than others. God himself has called some into the fivefold ministry. And God has put a mission upon the apostle. God has put a mission upon the prophet. God has put a mission upon the evangelist. God has put a mission upon the pastor. God has put a mission upon the teacher. This is a fivefold ministry. But you must understand that it is said that only 2% of members of the body of Christ are called into the fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter 4. So my question is, what are others called to do? Are they called to spectate? Are they called to sit on the stands and clap hands for preachers? No. Everyone has a mission from God. Come on now, say amen. amen. Like I said to you on Tuesday, I may not necessarily pull you up and tell you what the mission is. But as you sit under the anointing and under the word, the spirit of God shall begin to come to you and reveal that which the Lord wants you to do. That which the Lord had prepared for you before the foundation of the world shall be revealed unto you. Can someone say amen? amen. We see some are gifted spiritually. We see some are gifted intellectually. Is that correct? Some are gifted intellectually while some are gifted physically. Now we can, listen to me, we can all improve in, in all these areas. But you notice that there are just some people that will have that edge over others. Is that true? Even when you talk about in, in the, the intellectual endowment, there are just some people that are extremely intellectual. Is that correct? 
You talk about the physical endowment. Some people are just physically endowed. Yeah, you can do all the exercise to be strong like they are, but in actual fact, they are just gifted. Is that correct? You, you, you look at school, there's some people just, just, just smart. Not everybody would fly a plane. No, no, that's true. Not everybody would be an engineer. Not everybody would be a surgeon. Not everybody would be a brain surgeon. Is that correct? Come on now, say amen. amen. But that does not mean that the guy who is a brain surgeon is more important than you. That simply means that a guy who is a brain surgeon understands what God has gifted him with. And you need to also understand what God has gifted you with. Your gift may be sports. And if that's what God's giving you, then you need to develop in that area and be the best sportsman that you can be. Everyone has something, people. And that's the reason why you must never live your life comparing yourself with other people. Some people are so dissatisfied with themselves because they always compare themselves with someone else who is doing better than they are. But you shouldn't compare yourself with anyone because God has a divine mission for you. And the mission that God has for you is different from the mission he has for the other guy. Come on now, say amen. So whatever God is giving you, that's your mission. And can I be honest with you? It is not difficult to find out. Some people are trying to find out God's plan for their lives. And they wonder, how am I going to know it? Listen, if you are serious to know it, you will know it. If you are really serious to know God's mission for your life, so that you stop beating about the bush and copying what everyone else is doing, You can know it. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. For whosoever asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocks, the door shall be opened. You shall find him when you search for him with all your heart. People have lost that tenacity. People have lost that that desire, that drive. People have lost that that tenacity that will keep them pressing in until the breakthrough. When there is resistance, there's got to be persistence. Because when you persist, your persistence will break the resistance. Well, Pastor God, I prayed last week. I did not hear nothing. Pastor God, well, last month we had five days of prayer and fasting. And listen, you're not going to take no for an answer. I must know. I must discover. I must find out. If you're pressing like that, God's going to show you. Come on now, say amen. amen. This is very important. It's not difficult to know. It's not difficult to know. You've got to, you've got to be resolute. I will know. And when you have the mentality like that, listen, God will jump over 5 million people to find you in your house. Can I tell you tonight that God knows your address? God knows where you live. Come on now, God can come find you. I don't don't know where you live, but God knows your address. And God can come to your address and find you. God is willing to, listen, because things like this, when we talk about the mission of God for your life, they don't fall on the laps of casual seekers. Because these things are precious. And God's not just going to dole these things out to people who will not value it. If you won't value the mission of God for your life, why should God show it to you? If God showed it to you, you're going to waste it. These things are holy. These things are precious. These things are important. God does not just distribute these things to people who will not value. Have you noticed that when someone does not pay a price for something, they don't value it? Have you noticed it? That when they don't pay a price, you know, it's easy to spend someone else's money. Have you noticed it's easy to spend someone's money? Have you noticed if someone gave you their $100 to, you can easily spend. But if it's yours, you'll be careful. Because 
You understand responsibility. And that's the reason why you, there is a price to pay to discover the purpose and the mission of God for your life. When you pay the price by pressing into God, by locking yourself up in your room, by coming to a conference like this, and you say, God, I'm pressing into you. I must discover the mission for my life. I cannot leave here today and there tomorrow. My God, some people are running all over the place like a chicken with his head chopped off. But I declare in the name of Jesus, that is not never going to be your portion ever again. It is time for you to discover you're a man of destiny. You're a woman of destiny. There is a uniqueness about your life and you're going to step up and accomplish only the plan and the purpose of God for your life. If you believe it, give the Lord a big shout of hallelujah. <laughs> Observation number one, everybody had something. Can I tell you tonight, there is something on your life. Just look at some people that can sing. Is that right? That's why we have them on the worship team. Some people shouldn't be on the worship team. Some people, when they sing, everybody sleeps. When I was growing up, growing up as a believer in the church, I, I used to hear, I used to hear, especially women, mothers back in those days. Pastor, I have a special number. <laughs> My God, this special number thing. I grew up hearing special numbers. And uh, I came over here to Istanbul and they came with their special number. <laughs> and uh, the special number was not special. The only thing about this thing was the number. There's nothing special about the number. It was just a number that there's no special in it. They came and they said, Pastor, I have a special number. The pastor gave them the microphone. And when they came up to sing their special number, they would tell us, listen to, my, to, my, uh, to the lyrics of the song, but not to my voice. My sister, if you can't sing, just keep quiet. I don't want to listen to the lyrics of the song. If you can't sing, don't sing. Some people, the best place for you to sing is in the shower. Just sing while you're taking your bath. It will sound nice. The Lord will love it. But don't sing in front of the church. But there are people gifted. Even at the age of five, when they open their mouth, the thing that comes out of their vocal cord will shock you. The power that is released. You'll be amazed. It's a gift from God. That's God's gift to that child. You don't need to learn it. It is given by God. You were born with it. And a lot of people don't succeed in life because they refuse to discover that which God has placed on the inside of them. And that is why they're beating about the bush and trying to be like every other person when they are unique and divinely gifted by God. If only everyone understands that God has gifted them uniquely, they, 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 they'll stop all this competition. Come on now, say amen. Amen. Is he stopping anybody? Everyone has got something. Everyone has got something. Praise God. Some, some people are good in sports. Look, look at the president of Liberia. Who's from Liberia? Anyone from Liberia here? The Liberian president, George Weir, used to be a football player. I believe... Most Africans will agree with me that he is still the greatest football player Africa has ever produced. I know the Ghanaians will say, no, it's Abedi Pele. But anyways, um, I, <laughs> and then the Nigerians will say, no, it's JJ Okocha. But anyways, I, I, I truly believe, personally, I believe that George Opongwere is the greatest football player Africa has ever produced. But as I speak to you now, he is the president of Liberia. Are you listening to me? From nowhere, he used sports, he used football to bring himself to the limelight. Whatever God has gifted you with will bring you to the top. Amen. But no, uh, Africans, I've never seen, listen, the average African, and don't get me wrong, when I say the average, I'm not saying it's a general thing, but there are just some people that just want to compete with you. The, the moment they see you doing well, they want to pull you down. The average African just want to compete and criticize those that are doing well. Oh, yeah. 
Exactly. It's the heart of, the heart of man, like Pastor, like Bishop said yesterday. It's the heart. It's the heart. The average, the, the, the average, the average African just want to pull you down. There is no need to compete. Nobody should be a threat to you. God has a divine path for you. Nobody should be your threat. Nobody is a threat to me. I'm not afraid of anybody. Nobody can take my gift. Nobody can take my wife. Nobody can. No. <laughs> No, no, but nobody, nobody can take my ministry. Nobody can take my blessing. What God has given me is mine. The Bible says, whatever God does shall be forever. Nothing can be taken from it. Nothing can be added to it. God does it that men may praise him. Come on now, say amen. Come on now, say amen. Come on now, say amen. amen. The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Once they are given, they'll not be retrieved. My covenant, I will not break, nor alter the thing that's gone out of my lips. For my word is like the snow and the rain that cometh from heaven and returneth not back again, but waters the earth. And make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which I sent it. And it will prosper in the thing that I please. What God has given to you, what God has destined for your life, no man can disrupt it. No man can alter it. No man can take it. No man can touch it. It is exclusively for you. I'm preaching better than you're responding tonight. Praise God. Observation number two. Each gift or each was gifted according to their ability. Did you listen to when she read it? The master Gave to each person according to their ability. Notice, not according to the master's ability, but according to the ability of the recipients. Mm. Now, you know what that tells me? That ability determines the size. Oh, God, God is a partial God. Why is it that he gave this man five and this two and this, this guy just got one? He gave them according to their ability. The guy who got one was not going to stay at one. The guy who got one can actually get five. The Bible says that if you are faithful with little things, God will make you a ruler over many things. God requires and expects faithfulness from each of us. And this is the way we can grow and maximize what God has given to us. You know how we can do that? By growing. We must improve. We must educate ourselves. We must get better. Africans, listen to me. You, each of you, you must take the responsibility of growing yourself. If you don't improve, the boat will leave you behind. If you don't grow, you will discover after five years that you'll be living in the Stone Age. Because everyone that decides to grow, everyone that decides to better themselves, everyone that decides to educate themselves, everyone that decides to get better at their trade and at their skill will do Better. The world is not looking for average. The world is not looking for, for people who I can barely get by. The world is looking for excellent people. Amen. This average mentality has got to leave us. This mediocre mentality, this, this mentality of mediocrity has got to leave us. We must improve. We must get better. If you're a musician, be the best. If you're a singer, be the best. Hallelujah. Don't tell me, Pastor, um, I'm trying. No, you're not trying enough. Push yourself. 
If you are a businessman, be the best businessman. If you are a businesswoman, be the best businesswoman. If you are a student, be the best student. Come out in flying colors. Pastor, I don't understand. Come, I'll lay hands on you. And, and, and. Come on, say amen. amen. God gave to each one according to their ability. Listen, ability determines the size. So God may have a grandiose plan for you, but the fulfillment of that great plan is determined by your growth. Let me read that again. God may have a grandiose plan for you, but the fulfillment of the grandiose plan is determined by your personal growth. <laughs> so the question tonight with regards to your size is how much can you handle? What is your capacity? It is not the size of the vision. It is not the size of the mission. It is the size of the man. How many of you know that prophecies are conditional? How many of you know that? The fact that I said, Don't mean it's going to happen. Even though it's of God. Because the, the fulfillment of the prophecy depends on the man. That's why, <laughs> you know, people are just religiously brainwashed. You think, oh, the Lord told me it will happen. Look, the Lord have told some of you stuff that has been like decades since it hasn't happened. And one of the, re listen, one of the, reasons, one of the reasons these things delay is because we refuse to grow. Until we grow, it won't happen. Oh, Pastor Garo, have you forgotten the scripture that says God uses the foolish things of this world? It does not say God uses fools. It says God uses <laughs> foolish things. It does not say God uses fools. It says God uses the foolish things. Not fools. Foolish things. And, and right, right there, it's actually referring to people that are looked down upon. It's not referring to dumb people. Foolish things don't mean dumb people who are ignorant. Oh, Pastor God, <laughs> I was born in the village. I grew up in the village. I don't know nothing. That's not what he's talking about. Because we live in such a, such a time in the 21st century where we can learn. Oh, and I'm, be, I'm, be, I'm, I'm becoming so natural. I'm now right. I'm just speaking natural stuff here. You know, but that's what a lot of Africans need because we are so caught up in prayer. And I love prayer. We're so caught up in dossier the Lord. And I love dossier the Lord. We are so caught up in night vigils. And I love night vigils. But it's time to use common sense. It's time to know how to apply the anointing you sense in church in the marketplace. It's time to know how to apply the anointing that you feel. All the sweat and all. It's time to know how to apply that in school. It's time. No, listen to me. Because in school, you're not going to be falling on the ground in the class. You're, 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 you're not going to be. Hopodo, shogodo, maha, hey. Woo, glory to God. I feel something. You, you're not going to do that in the, in the marketplace. When you, when you are a salesperson, you don't have a quota. No, you're not going to do that. You, you, you are going to let that anointing produce wisdom. Understanding. Common sense. Knowledge. Come on now, somebody say Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm getting blessed. So this means the more we grow in ability, the more we can maximize, make bigger, increase in size our mandate. If you notice, the man who got ten, eventually got ten talents, initially got five, he doubled his talents. 
When the master returned and the master said, okay, come give me account of what you've done with the talents I gave you. Notice that the master said, take the one talent from the guy who hid it and give it to who? Because God is not a non-profit. God is not a non-profit. God wants profit. God is not non-profit. He wants profit. When God invests in you, he wants you to profit. Come on, say amen. amen. God wants you to profit. So he said, take the one talent from the man who wasted it. Give it to the man who has ten. Because he is doing so well, more will be given to him. I've discovered that so many have lost what they were given. And what they were given has been given to someone else who is doing well. And don't be upset because, oh, oh, no, listen. The reason why you're doing more is because you are doing well. <laughs> the, the, reason, the, the, re, the reason why you're doing more is because you're doing well. Come on, say amen. If you're not doing well at what God has gifted you with, it might just go over to someone else. This is not the kind of message where people shout a lot, but praise God. Um, no, because listen, I, I said on Tuesday, this is not a bless me call. We're, go, we're going to mobilize people, and people must understand what this is about. But I know people are getting blessed. That is why at the AAC, I emphasize the need to educate yourself. That is growth. Number two, I emphasize the need to apply yourself. That is responsibility. And I emphasize the need to work hard on your trade and improve yourself. And that is initiative. Come on, say amen. Observation number three. What's observation number one? Everyone has something. What's observation number two? According to their ability. Observation number three. Each person was supposed to invest what he had. Investing it guarantees increase. Because ability is not invested would diminish. Did you hear me? Abilities not invested will diminish. It, it can actually get worse, can be lost. You've got to invest it. Start doing something. The verse I read to you before is, your beginning may be small, but your later end will increase greatly. Start doing something with what you have. Come on, say amen. amen. Now, how do I find my mission? I'm glad you asked. Key number one, by seeking God to reveal it to you. Look at Matthew 13, verse 44 to, uh, 44 to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man had found... He hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath. Notice what the man did when he found this treasure. He sold everything he had to get it. Casual seekers don't find it. Casual seekers don't find it. That's why I said to you, to find out God's mission for your life, it's not difficult. But you must have that desire to know it. The man went and sold everything that he had to buy that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking good pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Are you ready to give up everything that is standing in the way of the mission? 
I told you on Tuesday that good is the enemy of the best. A lot of times people can't run with God's mission for their lives because they are complacent. They camp out. They think where they are today is the best. But where they are today is not the best. Where they are today is good. But it's not the best. Can I tell you that God has more in store for you? Amen. Can I tell you that God wants to take you higher? Amen. Can I tell you that God wants to take you deeper? Can I tell you that God wants to do more in your life and through your life? Can I tell you that you must knock off this complacency? You must not be satisfied where you are. You must become dissatisfied. Because when you become dissatisfied, that's when you realize that you don't really have it. You don't really know it. The more I know God, the more I desire to know God. I've realized that's the reason why you, you get to the point in your relationship with God. The more you re it reveals himself to you, the more you realize how little you know him. And that is the attitude that we must have. Come on now, say amen. amen. So what must you do? Seek God. Seek God for it. Praise God. Key number two. Connect with achievers. <laughs> you know some people are negative. They're so negative, when you hang out with them, you just discover that you need to take a bath to clean yourself up. Have you realized that you, you may not smoke cigarette, but when you hang out with smokers, you smell like smoke? <laughs> Have you realized that negativity is contagious? Have you realized that it has a way of getting on you? Have you even realized that if somebody comes to you and tells you about this brother, even though you don't know him well, the day you see him, you have a bad attitude towards him? Is that right? They just told you something negative about him and you meet him for the first time, you already have a bad attitude because negativity is contagious. Don't hang out with negative people. Show me those you hang out with and I predict your destiny. I'll predict your future. Just show me people you hang out with because birds of the same feathers flock together. Show me those you hang out with, and I can tell you where you're headed. You've got to hang out with achievers. I'm not saying we despise. That's not what I'm preaching here. We're not despising those who are not up to par. No, we're not despising those who are down and out. No, but you must understand when it comes to achieving God's mission for your life, you've got to hang out with people that are doing something with their lives. Oh, come on now. I heard a story of a young man who wanted to do well in business. And you know what he did? He got himself 500 U.S. dollars and he went to millionaires and he met each of them and he said, Please, sir, I would like you to give me an hour of your time. I know $100 is nothing to you because some of these millionaires, they make $100 every minute. He says, Nothing, but please, I want to grow and I want to do well. I'll pay you $100 to give me an hour of your time. I want to pick your brain. He went to five of them and paid each of them $100. And they gave him one hour each. And when each of them was done with this young man who wanted to be a millionaire, who wanted to do business and do it well, none of them received the money from him. They said, no, go ahead and succeed. Listen, when people see that you truly want to succeed and you're willing to do what it takes to succeed, they'll help you. Amen. Somebody wants to clap and somebody stop. <laughs> success is contagious when you hang out with successful people it will affect you you just discover now you're thinking positively you're thinking success you want to do well come on now say amen, amen. is this helping anybody amen. praise God now this is how we're going to finish tonight I want, to, I want this service to be a mobilization service. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call up a few people because we have several platforms that I believe is really going to bless, bless you. Uh, we have uh, uh, African Students Conference, uh, which is basically an arm of the All African Conference. And I'm going to call up all the leaders of the African Students Conference. Can you come up, play, come up, here, come up here and stand with me? All uh, African Students Conference leaders, because we want to start 
letting you know that, listen, this vision that came, it's great. But for us to be effective at reaching people where they are, we have to begin to streamline to reach particular groups of people. So we have here Pam, we have Genevieve, we have uh, Tina Shea, we have Francis, Teddy Campis. Where's Terry? She's with the kids. Okay. Uh, we, have, we have Eric. Eric is from Uganda. He's gone back. He's finished his master's degree and he's gone back. And uh, Genevieve is from Zambia. Amen. Put your hands for Genevieve. <laughs> and uh, Francis. Francis is from DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. Put your hands for Francis. <laughs> and we have Teddy. Teddy's from South Sudan. <laughs> Tina Shea is from Zimbabwe. <laughs> Pam is from Botswana. And, yeah. And Pam is actually the leader of our students' conference. And so I said to, this, I said to these guys, this is, this is not just me running everything. You guys need to rise up and take care of that. And so we do conferences for uni students, African university students. We've done a few conferences, and I would like for Pam to please take the microphone and just share briefly about that. I want more students to be involved in this. It's time for us to begin to do this at a point where we can, we can, we can just pack out a, a place, an auditorium, 300, 400, 500 students, African students that come together to be blessed. And, and I was in Ankara, my wife and I preaching in a church in Ankara, the pastor, a very good friend of mine, was telling the story uh, because he's not just a pastor, but he's also a uni lecturer in a school in Ankara. And he was telling us the story how so many African students came to Ankara and they lost their minds because of peer pressure, because of all the stuff that they, they went through, and they flew them back. They literally went crazy. They flew them back to Africa. So we have been able to build uh, something with uni students where we can create a safe zone for them and they can come and be blessed. And so, yeah, that's Terry. Terry is from Kenya. And uh, we, also, we also have Eric Magezi. Er Eric is from Uganda, but he's gone back, like I said, finished his master's degree and went back. We also have Karen Diaz. Karen Diaz, you might say, Karen Diaz, that cannot be an African. Yeah, she's not an African, she's from Colombia. But she walks with the team and she reaches out to African students and we bring them to the conferences and empower them. She's from Colombia. She's also in America right now. She just graduated also. And yesterday, Pam bagged a, a master's degree. Just yesterday. Just yesterday. So, Pam, take a minute or two and just... Pardon? Miriam. Ah, Miriam. Oh, yes, Miriam. Miriam Bamanyisa from DROC. She also just went back home. She's from DRC, and she's also part of the leadership, and she's such a blessing. And these guys that have gone back, Miriam and Eric, and they said they're going to basically stay connected to the team. Is that right? So please talk a little bit about what we've done and encourage students in this place. And when she's done, I'm going to also talk about the need to establish an African business forum for businessmen and women. We also need to begin to empower African businessmen and women in this country and raise them up to the place where they can actually succeed. I see the way some of the guys do their business. It's totally unprofessional. My God, just like uh, Pastor Nikki said yesterday, you can't charge me $20 because of the way I'm dressed. If the good is worth $5, I need to pay $5 too like everyone does. Is that right? But anyway, it's so unprofessional the way a lot of people do their business. We want to begin to also create a platform for African businessmen and women so that we can do conferences for them and train them and prepare them. And I'm not standing here to say I know everything about business, but we'll get you the right people who know business, who know what it takes to succeed in the marketplace, and they'll teach you. Is anyone, anyone excited about that? Yeah. Yeah. Ben. Praise God. Uh, just like Pastor Godu has already said, uh, we have a platform for we have a platform for students that we created, and 
the conferences officially started in 2017. And when we had the very first one, it was exciting because the students who came in were excited and they were asking for more. They said, we need to do more of this, more of the students, they need to hear about what you guys are doing. And like he mentioned already, we're creating a platform to reach out to African students in this nation. Most of them come in and some it's their first time to be outside their comfort zone, which is their home and their families. And they go through a lot of challenges, whether it be it at the dormitory or at school or just socializing with people in this nation that they have never met before and there's culture shock and all of those challenges that they go through. So this platform is meant to reach out to them and say, we're here for you, we are family, and basically to empower them and give them the skills and the abilities to be able to tackle the challenges that, that they go through. And at the center of all of this is the word of God. Right. Because when you have Jesus with you and you have the word of God, you can face anything head on. And whatever it is that you go through, you'll be able to overcome because you have Christ with you. you know? And we go through challenges as Christians in as much as unbelievers go through challenges as well. But what we have as an advantage is the word of God. What we have is Christ, and that is our weapon. And this is what we're trying to put across to them and say, the word of God is here, is available, and we're trying to empower them and raise them up just like the bigger body is saying we are raising up Africans in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And here we are raising up university students in this nation so that they can discover their purpose and their plan for their lives so that they may rise up and begin to walk down that path. Amen? Amen. So we are raising a new breed. Yes, Amen? Sir. And since we have started, we have looked at issues like... Uh, breaking subculture. Yes, breaking subculture. And Relationships. Yes, relationships, they're important Who to marry, who not to marry. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. It's, important I'm just to, you. <laughs> it's important to talk about these things because, you know, it's a part of our lives. You cannot ignore them and pretend, oh, we're in the church, we're Christians. You cannot talk about relationships. That's right. We have to. It's yes. important. Young Carry, people, carry a choice. Yes. Uh -huh. Because most of us come here and we are doing programs that we do not like. And when Pastor Godwell, before he started this, it was one of the things he mentioned to us. And he said, you know, I met someone who said, I'm doing a program that I do not like. I like something else. And it struck to him and he said, you know what? So many are going through this. And there's a reason why I should allow this platform to be so that these students who are into something that they do not love, encouraged by their parents, oh, go and study law, go and do engineering and make us proud. That's right. We need to have status, prestige in our community because our son, our daughter is doing law and is doing engineering. But is that what God has placed in your heart? Is that what God has called you to do? Because at the end of the day, when you stand before him, it's just going to be you. Mom and dad or whoever is not going to be next to you. You're going to answer to God and say, this is what you gave me, and this is what I did with it. So basically, we've been able to put across to the students and say, you might be where you are and say, I do not love where I am. I do not like what I'm doing. But it is not too late to change. That's it right. is not too late to turn and say, you know what? This is what God has called me to do. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what God has put on my heart. And I can begin again. I can start afresh and still make it. You have men and women who have started at age of 50. Oh, yeah. And they did what God has called them to do, and they fulfilled their destiny. That's Amen? Right. Amen. Yes. That's so good. Thank you so very much. Amen. And, and here's, what we, hey, hey, here's what we've been doing. We, we meet every quarter. Yes. Every quarter. We just had a picnic uh, two, days, uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, Two yes. weeks ago, picnic exclusive for uni students. And look, it's a safe zone, too, because a lot of them go through a lot of peer pressure. And they come here, like I said, some were shipped back to Africa because they literally lost their minds. And they come here, there is uh, discriminated against, and there is segregation, and there is racism and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I can't even tell her the story that some, one, a student shared with me of the way she was treated in a dorm. You know, so terrible stuff happened, you know, and they don't have friends, they don't have uh, a place like this where they can come to, they can be loved, they can be helped, we can hug them, we can hold their hands, and we can tell them, no, you're not alone, you have a family here. That's why we built this. And that's why this is going to flourish, and this is going to be a blessing to many students. Come on now, say amen. Thank you so much.
Amen. So if you are in, can I get, if you are interested, you have students in your church. You, I, I try to reach out to the pastors. I said, look, what we're doing, we are not here to take your people from you. Don't be scared. We're here to help them, empower them, and they will come back to your church. We're not interested in taking your people. Yeah. We're just interested in empowering them. As you can see, these guys are doing an amazing job, and I'm very proud of each of them. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So if you want to be a part of the Uni Students Conference, I believe very soon we need to do a conference where we invite people to an auditorium like this for Uni students alone, and then uh, they like to talk about intellectual stuff. We shall deal with that. And then... Talk about spiritual things and just help people rise up to the place that they should. Come on now, say amen. Put your hands together for these guys. Go ahead. Bless you. So see any of these guys if you are interested. Praise God and we shall keep you posted. Brother Kofi, can you come please? River Bible Institute. These are platforms. If we talk about missions, we can talk about missions without talking about preparation. A seizing of preparation is not wasted. But Akofi, one of the testimonies that you gave that really blessed people, it's not just how the Lord is, is blessing you with a business and a company and all of that, but it's how you came through River Bible Institute and how it totally changed your life. We have a Bible school. It's a two-year diploma program. When you come to the River Bible Institute, your life will never, ever be the same again. Not everyone that comes to the Bible school turns out to be preachers. Some people turn out to be businessmen and women. Some turn out to be politicians. Some turn out to be... Yeah, listen. Why not? Why don't we, why don't we have presidents and, and heads of states and, 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 and governors and mayors and, and people that have come through a good Bible school like RBI who have the qualities and the attributes and the characteristics of God and they can change a nation? Why don't we? Praise God. Even as I talk about politics, I don't know what yeah, yeah, just. Like Damaris, Damaris, come. <laughs> Call, bring your wife. She's part of the whole story. She's part of the whole story. <laughs> so, take a few. Now, take a few minutes. You know, these are the, this is the couple that met at the AAC. They, they <laughs> sowed the seed and the Lord blessed them. And here they are again. So, Brother Kofi and Sister Damaris, can you share Bible school what the Lord gave you and how that has impacted your life. Go ahead. Okay. okay, I would first like to start by touching on what Pastor Godwin just talked about right now, the university students. Something happened in my office that actually broke my heart. Just within this week, a lot of students have graduated from universities. And one guy walked into my office and told me, Brother Cyril, I want you to offer me a job. I, I was so shocked. So I asked the guy, but you just graduated, so why don't you go back to Africa and help your community with what you have? And what the guy told me was shocking. The guy came from a point like my government that gave me the scholarship to come to Europe and stay the, out of power. So me going back to Africa, there is nothing for me. So I asked the guy, so what about all those years you've put in, it, in school? Do you really know the mission for your life? The guy was like, confused. It was like, I really don't know what to do. And now I'm keen in that one into the Bible school, River Bible Institute. That's right. When I came into this nation, like so many other people, I was confused. Totally confused. The thing about Istanbul is, most Africans who cross over are like, this is a transitional zone. We want to transit to Europe. It's just a zone where we wait and make little money and then we go over for greener pastures. So I came in the same manner like so many people, confused and not knowing what to do with my life. And I thank God for one brother who was a Bible school student who happened to evangelize to me, took me to church. And within the same week he took me to church, there was something that happened. That thing changed my life because I was so touched by the tangible presence of God the very first day that I stepped my foot into the river church. That made me to sign up for Bible school. And so I'm talking, I'm bringing it all back to the point like what this guy told me is there are so many people out there who are confused. They don't know what to do with their life. They are career people, but they are lost. Just give God a season of your life. Yes, Those seasons will never be wasted. Mm -hmm. 
Because when you give God a season of your life, he's going to make sure that what he's embedded in you, even whilst you were not yet even conceived in your mother's womb, is going to come to pass. So I'll let my wife add some, and then I'll continue. <laughs> Praise God. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I'm his helper based on the word of God, and that's why he called me. I did not know he would call me. <laughs> but, but he writes it when we do it together, and it's okay. Well, according to what Pastor God has said about the Bible school, is one of the platforms that have changed my life completely. As he said that I also came to this country without exactly knowing what I wanted to do or what was my life, I mean, what I desired to have in my life. I just, okay, desire, okay, had it in my mind, like I want a greener pasture, but I did not know how to, because when I came to Turkey, I realized it's a dry place. It's not a greener as I, as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and the things become so tough. But one thing is that God arrested me when I was very fresh, when I arrived here. I was so desperate to have a change, to have a different kind of a life. And when I, when I, when I, I, I happened to connect into River Istanbul Church and whereby I was invited to enroll myself in Bible school. When I went there, I decided, I said, okay, how what is the Bible school? Is it not done only for pastors, preachers, and all that? For me, I don't think I am for that. Uh, then, but then I decided, since they are talking about this God, and I desire to know more about myself, because I believe that God has created me for a reason. Right. So there are so, many, there are so many things I have learned in Bible school, including who I am. Yeah. I came to the knowledge of who I am, that I should not just learn any how to any live the life or like just purposely, and I have to go by who God has called me to be. And then I also came to realize that I did not, I, I, I came from somewhere. As the word of God says that God created me a, uh, after his own image. Right. I realized that I'm a spirit being. I realized that I had to feed that spirit so that I can be able to overcome any obstacles and any challenges in this life. So the only way I could feed my spirit is by hidden myself in the word of God and any platform that is open for me to receive from the, from the spirit of God. So when I was in Bible school, I was so hungry. And the Lord started speaking to me deeply in his things. So I came up to the knowledge that this is not my home. I am heading somewhere. Yes. But before heading that place, I have a purpose. Right. But how can I accomplish it? I have to yield to the Holy Spirit that he may be able to lead me to the places that I'm supposed to be, to the people that I'm supposed to be with. and now. also. <laughs> Yeah, she's preaching now. So you come to Bible school, my God, you so will preach. So when, so <laughs> I came to know how to pray and not just pray a casual oh, prayer because I actually did not know how to pray. Mm. But through Bible school, I was able to learn how to pray perfectly. I mean, with the help of the Holy Spirit, and I was able to know how to pray in details to have a perfect and effective prayer. So whereby God have been answering the prayer each and every time I pray. It's not the time I was... And in the course of that, I also know that there is hope for me after this life because oh, yeah. I will not live here forever. But there is a time as I prepare this way, I know there is a future. There is, a, there is the other side of you know, eternity. But as before I cross over, I have to prepare myself. So I am in the preparation line. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> So I am so grateful. I'm so blessed to have gone through Bible school. 
and I can end, I would like to encourage each and every person yes. who have not really gone through that season of preparation to take this opportunity. It is, it is not a wasted one. It's gonna be of great help to you and your future and your family and anything that you endure to do. Because as an example, I did not know that God will bring my husband through Bible school. I was a, <laughs> he came through Bible school and I am so impressed because he is a wonderful and a huge blessing in my life. Amen. Now, the, yes. the, the last one preacher, I would say. Preacher, wait. Oh. <laughs> preacher. Preacher, wait. Look, look, you can see, this, you can see uh, the Bible school info package. Uh, our ushers are lifting those up. Uh, for those that are interested in coming, this is the right time to make the decision. Just pick up an info package. You want to know a little bit more about school, we shall spend the time to talk to you extensively about River Bible Institute. You want to come to Bible school like you've been hearing from them. You don't have to be a preacher when you finish Bible school. You don't have to be a pastor, an apostle, a prophet. Lift your hand to get an info package, an information package, to just know more about what we are talking about tonight, and we shall get you plugged into school because we're talking about the mission, and the mission must come through a process, and you must be ready for what God is about to do in your life. Lift your hands and get an info package right now. Anybody, 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 anybody? Continue. So uh, when I got to know that he is my husband, I, really I, really, I had not married before. So I really <laughs> needed the Holy Spirit to teach me how to be a good wife. A good wife. <laughs> I needed him. And even after getting married, uh, I realized that I, the children started coming. I also needed the wisdom on how to, to raise, raise them. them. I needed to know how to be a good mom. So I needed the Holy Spirit, and there is no way I could have come to the knowledge of him better than through Bible school, by yielding to him daily. I also came to the knowledge that that was not enough. There is potentials that he has placed in me, and that I had to step out and help my husband as I am his helper, <laughs> and I, as he step in his business, I may not be able to help him carry the cargo, those bars, you know, they are heavy. But when I'm back in the house, I intercede for him. I pray for him like 99% of my prayer is for him. Uh, so when I pray, God answers and he strengthens you're a good him. And <laughs> so he need, I, I realized that. I couldn't be a good helper without asking the greatest helper that is the Holy Spirit to come and help me through. So, so far, so good. I am enjoying it. And um, so so I'm looking forward. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. And the, the last one that will maybe say is that. You were not even ready to come up, and now you are preaching. <laughs> <laughs> the, nobody should give an excuse. That's right. Because, like Pastor said, that we Africans sometimes we come to the point where we don't want to improve ourselves. God um, put placed in our heart to start a company which is in a foreign country like this. Things are seems to be very complicated. Things seems every. The laws keep changing each and every, any overnight. So I, I've been the one studying strong in that company. I realized that there is nobody who can help you better than the Holy Spirit. He is the one who can direct you. He is the only one who can show you who to go to. He is the one who can connect you divinely. And that when you go some places, I step in, I don't know even what to do. But the Holy Spirit, I find that he is already there in advance. Some offices that you go, they, they tell me, we have never even seen a black person here. And then I'm like, 
oh, and by this is the right place. Then they will tell me, yes. So uh, then at the end of the day, uh, they give me the best and the right services. So I break through in that because the Holy Spirit has been given to me that he will not leave me, he will not forsake me, he will always be there with me. So what I'm trying to say is nobody should give an excuse of not giving God a season for preparation. I am a mother, I am a, I'm a wife, I'm a business lady, and I have a vision, of course not division. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I am supporting his vision, but That's being good. able to support his vision, I need so much wisdom. Because God cannot call me to be a helper, if to be his helper, if I have no those potentials, if I have no ability to help him. So each and every day, I yield to the Holy Spirit to help me to know what I should do each and every day and to come up brightly and smart like I'm expecting. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, Brother Kofi, she has said everything. <laughs> she has said everything, yes. <laughs> yeah, but what I would want to just add is, like everyone who comes to this country, the best time you can join Bible school is when you come fresh. Because when you say, oh, let me wait one more year, let me make some little money here and there, I will join Bible school next year. As time goes on, things keep getting tougher because where I'm studying today, if I didn't pay the price those early years, I would not have been able to complete Bible school. And that school is known as school of the spirit. Right. Because when you come out from Bible school, there is one thing that is never, there is one thing that every student that comes out from Bible school always says, your right. life will never be the same. Yes. That is Change. the school of the spirit. Amen. That school where you graduate from there, it opens doors that under normal circumstances, you cannot open. The favor of God goes with you. There is something, the anointing is so tangible. That school is so all and sundry. And I'm imploring all my brothers and sisters here, especially those who, as Pastor Priscilla was saying yesterday, some people have missed their mission. Some people do not actually know where they're going. But I, I'm telling you from experience, as Pastor Godwin says, he who is with the experience, not at the mercy of he who is with the argument. argument. Yes. So what I'm telling you is, Join Bible school. Give God a season of your life. It's like building a skyscraper. You need a season. You count the cost, okay? Anytime God is going to make you do something for him, step out and do exploit, he's going to need you to have the necessary resources to get the job done. You just don't go out there without counting the cost. And how do you prepare to build that skyscraper or something? You go through a season of preparation. And God is taking most of us here to greater heights, Amen. to push new frontiers, especially Africans who are here. God is going to release you into different fairs of right. Amen. People will be going back to their nation to effect change, but that change cannot be effect, very effective if you don't have the foundation. That's right. And that foundation can be given to you at River Bible, Bible Institute. Institute. Give God a season of your life, and one thing I know, there will be a paradigm shift. Everything you see in this life will be through a different spectacle. Amen. Thank you Amen. very much. Thank you very much. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now, thank you guys. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, oh, what is it about today? Look, today it's about mobilizing people. If we just come here, preach, preach, and people shout, and we don't tell them how to get to accomplishing the mission, then it's been a waste of time. Yeah. I don't want to waste anything. I want to make sure that we do it and we do it well. We can come up here and preach and you shout and roll on the floor. But that's what I've seen in the church for too long. People just get all this boom, 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 but they don't know what to do with all the boom, boom, boom. We are telling you that these platforms are available. If you want to accomplish big things and you want God to use you, you have to give God a season and let God do the work that needs to be done. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We also have a youth and young adults ministry. Amen. For those that are interested in joining our youth and young adults ministry, we meet every other week, right? Are we meeting every other week now? Once in a month. We meet once a month for young people. You can also be a part of that. Like I said earlier, we also want to establish an African business forum. It's going to be exclusive for African businessmen and women, and we shall talk to you more about that. I believe by tomorrow we shall put... Um, um,
put something up there for people to sign up. Uh, we shall announce that again tomorrow. People to sign up and be a part of that. Give us your name, your phone number, your email address, and we shall get in touch with you. Have you been blessed tonight? Yeah. Before we let you go, before we let you go, with every head bowed, every eyes closed. I want to invite you to come to know Jesus. That's where the mission begins. Like I said to you on uh, Tuesday, that Satan has a mission and Jesus has a mission. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come that he might have life and have it more abundantly. You're here tonight or you're watching by way of the internet. You've never made Jesus a lot of your life. If you died tonight, my dear friend, where will you spend eternity? Or once upon a time you give your heart to Christ, but you walked away from him. You're no more where you used to be. Your heart is cold. You have become lukewarm. But tonight you want to come back. Or you are here tonight. Your mind is telling you one thing. Your heart is telling you the opposite. You do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you close your eyes in death, you're going to go to heaven. You want to know that you're a child of God. You want to give your heart to Jesus. You want to turn away from a life of sin. You want Jesus to become the Lord of your life. If that is you, if the descriptions that I gave talks about you and you want to come to know Jesus today or to rededicate your life to Jesus or to make sure of your salvation, quickly, lift up your hand. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. Quickly. 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 Anybody? To give your heart to Jesus tonight. To rededicate your life to Jesus. Anybody? God bless you. You can all look at me. Amen. Well, have you been blessed tonight? <laughs> Listen, we, we are squeezing, and I'm glad for you guys. My, you guys are still here. You, you really don't mind. We are squeezing out every juice from this conference. We're squeezing out everything. We, like I said the first day, we paid for this already. We've paid for this place already. By God's grace, we have people that gave from our church. And this has been paid, paid for, fully paid for. And so we squeeze out everything. Praise God. Uh, we're going to let you go home. Tomorrow is the final day. I want you to invite two people. Lift your hand. I'm going to deputize you. Lift your hand. I deputize you to go invite two people. Don't come tomorrow without two people. Bring them here. I commend you in Jesus' name. We love everyone on the internet. God bless you. Join us tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. We love everyone in the house. Go home. Let someone know you're glad before you leave. We love you. God bless you.